Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel for another installment in our reviewed and ranked series for Ultimate Alliance 3. Today, we will be reviewing a polarizing character, and that's because of the source material that this character is based off of and their overall performance in the game as a whole. And of course, that is Scarlet Witch. Now, I really wish that I had positive things to say about this character, and I won't give away my ranking here, as I will reserve that for the end of the video, um, but just know that Scarlet Witch is an incredibly powerful character in the comics and the source material that she is drawn from, and I do feel like the character model and abilities are faithful to what would be in her capacity as a character. I'm not ragging on the design of what the developers decided to go with, but rather I feel like there was a very clear disconnect in the overall potency and efficiency of how those abilities work. And part of that I feel is due to Scarlet Witch being thrown into more of that support class type role, which there aren't a lot of support characters in the cast. And there's generally that sort of a trade-off where if you are in the support archetype, you do suffer from the damage output and other applications of the sort. But we'll get into some more details of how her ability and kits work, and I'll discuss kind of where I feel like we fall a little bit short as well. But as we get into the actual breakdown for this character, make sure you check to see if you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not, go ahead and fix that for me real quick. And as always, if you found today's video helpful, enjoyable, and or interesting, make sure you hit that like button. So starting off with the base team build synergies that Scarlet Witch has, she has four different synergies that she contributes to any team build. She has one in the Mastery category with Midnight Suns, one in the Vitality category with Ultimate Alliance 3, and two in the Energy category with Avengers and Women of Marvel. So not the most powerful synergies that we've seen, but it does have some application when it comes to allotting more energy available for your ability and synergy type attacks, but there are other characters that provide more of a benefit than just those two, as well as allowing for additional buffs to the team, such as the strength categories. So a little bit lackluster on the overall uh, team build synergies for Scarlet Witch. Moving on to Scarlet Witch's basic attacks and such, we have her standard combo, which involves her shooting out a couple of chaos bolts uh, out in front of her character. And these do have a minor degree of some homing attacks to them where they will seek out opponents that are out in front of Scarlet Witch as she layers in these attacks. The drawback with this is that it doesn't provide any sort of staggering to smaller characters, especially the grunts that are very common in any set of enemies that you encounter in the different sections of the game. And that doesn't tend to bode well for these types of characters because typically with those standard attack combos, it provides some sort of buffer or knockback to prevent the character from taking damage from the enemies that they are confronting. And as a matter of fact, you tend to see Scarlet Witch getting buffeted out of her animations and not able to finish through her attacks in order to reliably contributes to damage that's taking place in the fight. And that's a huge drawback for me when it comes to these characters. The heavy attack, of course, does have some knockback to it. It has a similar homing type capability to it. Here you do see that it takes place in a static area very far away from where Scarlet Witch is standing. Uh, but if there is a group of enemies, it will auto-correct again in front of the character uh, based off of how far away she is from her opponents. It will hit closer if that's where the closest opponents are, but if they are farther away, then it will home into as far a distance away as you're seeing here on the screen with the demonstration. Scarlet Witch does have the flight characteristic upon activating the jump button while airborne, and that allows her to traverse some of the floor type hazards a little bit easier, though this does maintain that cautionary descriptor of consuming some of 
her energy points while she is in her flight state. Scarlet Witch's falling aerial actually has some of her calamity spheres uh, that will be sent out as she makes her way down to the ground, and these, like most of the attacks within her kit, does home on to enemies that are out in front of her, though the damage and knockback are somewhat lackluster. It will actually knock back some characters, and that's a benefit that is not possessed in her basic attacks, but they don't do incredible amounts of damage, and these orbs don't seek very reliably, so I have seen it where they fall short of the enemies that are in uh, front of Scarlet Witch as she is falling down to the ground. So uh, additionally, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to use this because she's not put in a position where it makes it favorable to use a falling aerial type attack. So overall, I don't really agree with this particular animation. I think it would have been a little bit better if there would have been some sort of a blaster area of effect type deal rather than the uh, auto-seeking spheres that she has equipped to her. And for Scarlet Witch's block and dodge animation, she will conjure up a barrier up in front of her to mitigate damage incoming from her opponents. And as she dodges, she will spin away from the source of danger in the area that you directionally influence, which is interesting. I don't think that we've seen an actual spin out of characters as their dodge animation. Most of them tend to do some sort of roll, teleport, or uh, some characters will even just kind of lunge forward in the direction that they've been facing. So the spin is a nice touch, but it's really just an aesthetic thing over anything else. So we can now move over to Scarlet Witch's abilities, and Scarlet Witch does have the ethereal tech type on three of her abilities, which is fairly unique to her. The only other character that we've seen with ethereal type damage up to this point is Doctor Strange, and there aren't really a whole lot of characters that possess this trait, as it's a very unique damage dealing type. Her first ability is the Calamity Spheres, which will release a series of five magic energy bursts that will track down onto the enemy. And this attack takes a long time to fully conclude. She first has to conjure in the spheres, and then not until all five spheres have been released from her immediate vicinity does she become actionable again to follow up with a different attack, which is certainly a bit of a drawback. This has the burst synergy type and is the only ability of Scarlet Witches that can be synergized with the rest of her team, which is, again is another very devastating drawback to this character. It does make up for it decently with being an okay damage dealer, having the damage classification of A. I feel like damage classification of B would have been a little bit more fitting for this, just based off the damage that I've seen it do, especially where it is not a super rinse and repeatable type attack. It has an energy point consumption of C and a lackluster classification to stagger damage dealt with that D classification. And this particular attack as it's leveled up benefits from a reduced energy point cost, an increase to attack damage dealt, increase to stagger damage dealt, and finally a reduced chance of the attack being interrupted. But again, it's not a super great attack because it is very laggy. It takes a couple of seconds before Scarlet Witch is actionable after using this particular ability. Scarlet Witch's second ability is decently unique. Uh, it's the Disaster Field. This is a magic field that will deal continuous damage to the enemy and causes a slowing effect on the enemies within that area of influence. And this is an attack that is only active as long as you are holding down on that button and manipulating the area where that ability is deployed. And that is a nice attribute to it where it does have a decently customizable area of influence where you can move it around. And the slow attribute does allow for follow-ups to the opponents that are caught within that chaos from the other members of your team. Uh, but it's not super great other than that. It's decently conservative on the energy point consumption, doesn't deal any damage to the stagger gauges, 
and overall has a pretty bad classification to damage with that F, uh, though the damage ticks do uh, roll over pretty quickly, so that compensates a little bit for the underwhelming damage that any individual burst or hit would deal. Similar to the Calamity Spheres, this has the Ethereal Attack type, and this ability does benefit from a reduced energy point cost and increased attack damage on level up, but it also has an increase to the area of effect, or that sphere of influence will be increased as the attack is ranked up and finally benefits from a reduced chance of the attack being interrupted at its final rank up bonus. But due to the the fact that Scarlet Witch is rendered stationary while she is in this ability and it doesn't linger when you release the button like other abilities that we've seen from some other characters, uh, it's really not something that's going to be worth your time, especially with the lackluster damage that it tends to deal when active. Scarlet Witch's third ability is the Hex Bolt. So this is the other larger reliable damage dealing move that she possesses. This involves a fan of magic blades in about a 90 to 120 degree area of effect out in front of the character uh, as they release outward from where she is standing. The benefit of this attack is it will hit multiple characters that those blades do not dissipate as soon as they come in contact with a singular opponent. So I suppose that's a bit of a trade-off there. Um, and it's a little bit better on some of the damage dealing aspects, especially when compared to the disaster field where it has an A classification to the damage. It maintains that C to the energy points consumed and the stagger damage that it deals is not great. It's down in the E classification. This attack, similar to the Calamity Spheres, does benefit from having a reduced energy point cost on attack rank up and increase to the attack damage dealt and increase to the uh, stagger gauge as well as a reduced chance of the attack being interrupted. Scarlet Witch's final ability is the Chaos Blessing and this is a fairly unique ability amongst the cast as we don't see a lot of abilities that provide any sort of healing to your team. This sets down a regenerative field in the immediate vicinity of Scarlet Witch, and this is where I feel the biggest drawback of this particular healing effect uh, takes place, as with the Winds of Watum that we saw from Doctor Strange, he can at least influence the area with the wind gust that he emits out in front of him. However, Scarlet Witch doesn't have the ability to influence where she is. It renders your team sedentary for the almost 14 second duration or effective duration of this ability. And yes, it will heal a certain amount of health to the character and it is a percent based healing based off the individual character. Uh, so it's not going to be more or less effective for any given character, uh, but it really has that distinct drawback of requiring you to be within the area of influence of the blessing in order to reap the benefits from it, which with as long as it takes to execute, really isn't worth the trade-off. Uh, it does have a reduced energy point cost and increased effectiveness and an increased duration as it is ranked up as well as that final uh, reduced chance of the attack being interrupted. Uh, but with an energy point consumption of D and not a whole lot of benefit for the trade-off of time that it requires, I would highly recommend looking into the vitality masteries that will allow you to recuperate a percentage of health based off of damage dealt on extreme attacks or to staggered enemies rather than relying on these type of healing based abilities as these just don't tend to cut it as well as I would hope that they would, especially from a character that's placed in more of the support type role. For Scarlet Witch's extreme attack, she does have a decent area of effect for it, and it comes as no surprise that this is her best damage dealing attribute, but it is sad that that is what she has to rely on. The area of effect immediately under Scarlet Witch does appear to take on the same attribute as the disaster field, and then she does have a larger chaos energy blast that she emits from her person uh, towards the end of the attack, which takes just over five seconds to fully complete before 
uh, Scarlet Witch becomes actionable after detonating this particular attack. But the warning or the caution with this again is she will detonate this extreme ability exactly where she stands. The area does not uh, change or be altered. Uh, she will not course correct or move closer to opponents as she unleashes this attack. So you've got to make sure that you're right where you want to be before unleashing this attack upon the enemies that are in her immediate vicinity. So having looked at everything that is available within Scarlet Witch's kit, it's now time for us to determine where she belongs within this uh, tier list. And I've had a fairly condescending tone about this character, mainly because she's immensely powerful in her source material, and that just did not translate over to this game. And I understand the reason or the underlying reason behind that being the fact that she was relegated to more of a support type role. However, there are other support characters in the game that are at least more viable in terms of what they have to offer to the team. So unfortunately, uh, Scarlet Witch does not belong anywhere near the top end of this list. And I know that I said initially in my Hawkeye review that he is a very bad character, but he at least has some damage applications and contributes to the rest of the team. His attacks and abilities can synergize with the rest of the cast. I just feel like his attack damage is lackluster compared to all of the characters that I have listed above him. Um, but Scarlet Witch, she just does not have any true benefit to the teams that she is relied on. She tends to be more of a hindrance with her limited options than she ends up being a benefit from being present on a team. So it should come as zero surprise to anyone that I am uh, leaving her not only in F tier, but uh, giving her the title of the worst character in the game. And I do not expect this to change. Uh, based off of the other characters that are left to be reviewed, though there are other characters that I feel could have been done better, could have been represented in a different light. The one who falls the most victim to this is Scarlet Witch. But what do you think? Do you feel like there are attributes to this character that I overlooked? or ways that she can be used that can make her more beneficial or useful to a team. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And again, feel free to leave a like on today's video if you found it helpful, interesting, and or enjoyable. Thanks again for watching, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.